Well, it is an honor and a pleasure to to be able to bring the message this morning to you. Many of you that have been here for years know that I will fill in as a lay person in the absence of our minister, whether it be here or Woodlawn. And I just pray that if God has put this on your heart, that if I can do it, if God uses me, he can use anybody. So we are thankful for that. And today, normally, if you follow the lectionary or in Facebook, if you follow United Methodist, today is, nor is Baptism of the Lord Sunday. Now, what that means is many of the churches today invite worshipers to remember their baptism and to be thankful. But we can find moments every day that remind us of our baptism and what it means in our daily living. Please take a few minutes today and just kind of think of your baptism. But you'll notice that we're not talking about baptism Sunday. We are talking about we three kings. If you notice the front, wise men still seek him. And Joshua asked me earlier this week, he said, why are we still singing Christmas songs? I figured that we'd be singing our favorite songs. And I said to him, because of, of, of epiphany. Now, in preparing for today, I have come to love this day even more. We sang earlier, We Three Kings, a famous Christmas carol. And how many of you love it? I do, yes, it's one of mine. Epiphany was on January the 6th of this year. So it was, it was last Friday. What is epiphany, you may ask? Well, it comes from the Greek word manifestation or show forth. The light shines forth or the light is made manifest. The ancient Jews thought the coming of the Messiah was just for them and not for the Gentiles, which is everybody else. But the wise man changed all of that by representing the Gentiles as they were first to worship. They were the first ones to worship Jesus. And they brought their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Epiphany is a sudden moment of revelation. An ancient in, in, in indication of new sights and clarity. A aha -ha moment. Have you ever had those aha moments? Well, we had one in Sunday school, and it just brought joy to my heart because I knew that I would be speaking this, and any time that we have an aha moment, I think it leaves us transformed. It leaves us radically transformed. So for us, it is an ancient church holiday celebrating an encounter between travelers from the East and a baby that left the world radically transformed. Why, when does this occur, you might ask? It's 12 days after Christmas. Not 12 days before, but 12 days after Christmas. Scripture tells us that the Magi followed signs revealed in the stars to baby Jesus. In this one solitary guided voyage, the holiness of Jesus' birth was revealed to the entire world. And who saw? Matthew called them magi. Who were they? Where did they come from? We don't know. We've made guesses over the years, and we have looked from in the book of Hebrew, in the Hebrew scriptures, like Balaam in the book of Numbers, chapter 24, who was summoned from the east to curse Moses, but instead gave him a blessing. Psalm 72 speaks of kings bringing gifts and bowing down before the king of righteousness, which is how, some argue, the Magi in Matthew's gospel became kings of tradition. As we assume there were three kings, because there were three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And no one really believes the gift is from both of us line that sometimes we use. How many times do we say, this is from the both of us? So we really don't know the truth of how many there actually were. Now, our family has changed a tradition. Our goal, okay, mine and Jacob's, uh, each year is to put up our Christmas lights, our decorations, and our
our trade the weekend after Thanksgiving. That's our goal. We must celebrate at our house, though, Thanksgiving first because we want to get thanks. And then when we put all of our fall decorations away, we get excited to decorate the outside with all of the lights and all of them inside. If it were up to me, I would even decorate our motorhome in the backyard. Okay, the Griswolds. You got it. I have several nativity scenes that we display. But according to the scripture that Kelly read this morning, the wise men came from the east to Jerusalem in verse 2, asking, Where is the child to be born the king of Jews? For we observed the star this morning, and it's rising, and have come to pay him homage. And when they get there, where the child resides, the first thing they do is worship. They pay him homage. If only we worship and then the gifts. Hadn't thought about it quite that way before. Gifts need to wait. Here's an idea, and I'm sure that my kids would not go along with this. Next year, we wait and receive our gifts until January 2024, the day of the 15th. I hear laughter already. Okay, I'm sure of you may be on board with that, but I'm sure that there are others that are not. But it's certainly appropriate to emphasize that the Magi didn't travel from wherever they traveled just to give baby Jesus some gifts. No, their journey was to worship, to fall on their faces, to the one who was a light of the world. Remember, they were outsiders. They were the ones who saw. The insiders, the ones who knew, never bothered to look. The Magi came to worship. Then they ate. As a response to one, they worshiped. As a way of extending their worship and making it tangible, they gave something of their extending their worship, oh, of their hands and their hearts. The giving of gifts is a precious thing, but it comes as a way of sealing what you've already poured out. The gift and the act of gratitude, a celebration of relationship, a sign of the condition of the heart. A gift always points itself to the person giving and the person receiving. And the Magi remind us of the incarnational moment where we are something of both, the receivers who want to give. Opening their treasures as we open our hearts when we give, they offered gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold was precious, worthy of a king. Frankincense, incense, worthy of divinity. And myrrh was a spice used in burials. Royalty, divinity, and sacrifice. A summation of life and light that came before us. To reveal us and to invite us. So going back to my nativity scenes. We now have the nativity scenes where we have the manger. But we have the wise men set at a distance. And every day after Christmas, they move a little closer until they get to until it gets to be January the 6th. And then they are there worshiping baby Jesus, just as the scriptures have told us. The 12 days after Christmas. This holiday is a time to ponder the birth of Christ, and how it actually can transform our lives. So this holiday has taken a new meaning for me. And in Sunday school, we were just talking about how we think Epiphany should be a holiday. Because it was the day that the Magi, or the wise men, came to pay homage and came to bring their gifts to worship baby Jesus. As the front of the bullet says, wise men still seek him. How are we 
going to serve him. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. Our gracious and most heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the love that you give us. We thank you for the birth of baby Jesus. Lord, as we talked about in Sunday school, the grace and the mercy that has been bestowed upon us. Lord, we need to also share that grace and mercy in our lives. Lord, I thank you for baby Jesus and what he means in my life. And I thank you that he gave his life for me. Lord, we give you praise and we give you honor and we give you glory. For it's through in Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.